Hi, everybody. Hi, Sharla. We're going to just do a little walkthrough for a minute while everybody's getting on board. We've been working on, this is the shell. Hi, Tanya. And I want to show you what we're going to work on today. And then I'll show you what we're going to work on Thursday. Okay, so our box opens. Today we're doing the pole waterfall. And the measurements were already posted. And they are at the top of the video. But I'll give you the measurements again as we go. So our pole waterfall will give you a place to put your photos. And then for the back, you'll see I just... Um, used a white cardstock so you can grab that from your stash you can use any color the kits are on countrycraftcreations.com so you can choose between um old world christmas or once upon a christmas we're working with once upon a christmas this is uh country craft creations own own paper line and it will be on the website next month september 10th so today we're going to create the waterfall there is a magnet if you don't want to use a magnet you won't use this arm and you can just use a ribbon you really don't have to use anything see when it comes up it will stay the only reason i did it is you can pull oh thank you you can definitely reach here and pull and you're going to love how easy this is to make but i added the arm just to make it easier to pull so it may even be a little bit shorter when we get there, we I'll never know. But I never know, but we'll, I haven't cut this piece. And then we're going to do the cover. So I did get this part of the book done. Let me show you. Let's put. And if you haven't seen this, what we've been working on, this one is the Old World Christmas. Let me turn off the light. Because, see, we put our lights in there. So there's the Old World Christmas and what's the... Once upon a Christmas, I have not uh, finished the inside of the lid with you, is, is the train. And of course, then we'll be making our poinsettias. And we have our lights in there. So I'll turn that off. And like the kits, again, are available at countrycraftcreations.com. They won't ship out till September 10th. And the 12th, the paper is being printed. Let me just set that there. Oh, and there are, there's a bottom. It has the feet on it. We're getting there. But one of the little books that will sit inside is just your Christmas organizer book. And when you open your book, you'll have this cute envelope. And that is where I'm going to just use a Heartfelt Creations die, and I'll cut this out. And I'll show you how I added the other little piece. But um, in the back, I've already added from this paper collection the tags. And I went ahead and cut them out. You do have to cut them down in height. And this will be nice. Yes, they're bigger tags, but you might have a bigger gift. Hi, Anne-Marie, but then you also might have... Um, you might just want to put a photo on the back. And you can do that and use this for matting. Put your photo on the back. I forget you got to pick up holding. And then you can actually just use that with the photo. Or you can do some layering. Makes it really pretty. Add it over on this side. Write your notes on it. So... I, that's one reason I really wanted to cut out these tags this year. I really want to make sure that I'm using them, but they'll fit behind the pocket. Um, I have not finished all the way. So I chose to use the paper clips and you'll have three in your kits. So I had to add a few things to your kits, but we didn't change the price. I am going to add, cut. A, I'm going to cut out with my punches. So you'll be able to use whatever punches you have, but we're going to have a pocket on the inside here. Again, you might want to just put some receipts while you're shopping or some notes. And that's why I chose to use the paper clips. I know Tanya just, Tanya had surgery yesterday and Tanya's on with us. And I just wanted the paper clips. So while it's closed, if I need to just pop a note on there, then the inside is just with white cardstock. And again, 
you can use it for photos, or you can actually write your notes right on here, or you can use your paper clip and just as you're making your notes, which I do a lot of, just pop it in there and close it for later. And if it was something you wanted to keep to remind yourself for next year, maybe Christmas cards, you're just going to pop it into the envelope part. And then when you bring it to the back, your envelope will be here at the top. And then I'll probably pop some pictures there. And all three... And these are cut out from the paper collection. All three will be the same. So we have three of them. And they just accordion, accordion, accordion up. And it also can just sit. So if you do want to put some lovely photos there, it will sit for you while you're looking at those. And number three. And again, just white on the inside. Okay, and that will be the organizer. So today we're going to cover, we're just going to cover the chipboard and put the album part together. And Thursday, we're going to create the pockets on the inside. So that will sit in the back just nicely. So Thursday, we'll do the insides, then we'll move into we got to get this done the first week of september then i'm going to have four cards that will sit here and then we're just going to have like a little junk journal for you to write in that's going to sit in the front again super nice gift i really could see this as being a mother's maternity if you want to use a baby paper how cute would that be for her to keep some memories in here then thank you cards to send out and then in this one in the front, or it could be wedding. And you can have a journal that she just writes down, visits to the doctor, etc. Super cute. And then we'll put the lid on. And it does have the, the bottom that we created that you can see the whole walkthrough on this one. But we are working on this one. Oh, you know what? Let me just, or again, you might just want to make, ooh, you might want to just take make tags. So I cut these off at the bottom. The, then you can just make tags to put in the front to give to someone for gift giving. How fun is that? Okay, so we're working on we're working on our old world Christmas or once upon a Christmas. I can't remember which one's which. It's on the website. Um, there's the bottom. We do have to put our feet on. But um, if you're just joining us now, I apologize. Yes. Burgundy paper's gone. You guys just, you bought it faster than the new shipment came in. It is coming in. It will be here. Um, it, it's coming in. You guys will be able to get the burgundy paper. So we're going to make the waterfall that sits right here. So I am just going to put, let's put the bottom on. And... Get what I need for the waterfall. My cover there. And we're going to start with a 7 by 12 inch piece of cardstock. Now I did cut another 7 by 7. I didn't put that in the cutting guide, but it will be on the written cutting guide that goes inside the kit. And this one is 7 by 7. And it's going to be our extension. And what we're going to do is um, put this um, on the back because this is so long. And we're going to need to make sure that um, I can't do this all in one piece because of how big it is. So you just want to make sure it's seven inches. And then we will go from there, um, cutting it down as we need when we get to, to that part. Trying to make my video bigger. Okay. Then I cut seven. Oh, thank you, Tanya. Seven, five by seven. These are going to be our waterfall pieces. Seven of them. And I just want to start with my seven by 12 inch piece of cardstock. And then 
when you're making these waterfalls, that accordion like that, just pop open. What you want to do is just make sure, now we're going to open it like a book. We're not going to pull it down like a waterfall. You certainly can make it that way. I wanted it to be more like the book. It needs to be the same width as your waterfalls. And then you just decide what size your waterfalls are. Where mine and for this project are five inches wide. That's going to tell me where I'm going to start scoring. Hi, T. Morris. How are you? And so if my waterfalls are only four inches wide, hi, Tricia, I would start scoring at five inches. But because my waterfalls are five inches, I'm going to do my first score line at five inches. Twelve inches across the top always. So if your waterfalls were only say six inches, you would cut this to six inches, but you're going to score it exactly the same. We're going to score a quarter inch. There needs to be a quarter inch gusset for each one of our waterfalls. And if you remember that, there's only two things you need to remember. Quarter inch and how wide your waterfalls are. Hi, Sherry. So we're going to start at five inches, five and a quarter. And there's your first gusset. It's hard to see on this paper. My first gusset, that means I've got one waterfall and I need a gusset for each waterfall. So you ready? Five and a half, five and three fourths, six. So just count your gussets one, two, three, four. There's four waterfalls. Six and a quarter, six and a half, and six and three fourths. I think that's seven. One, two, three, four, six, seven. So now what I have, let me turn it over. What I have is seven gussets. One, two, three, six, seven. That's how many I need because I'm going to put a waterfall in between each one of those. And we have to remember, you've got to start. There's my five. So that's where we're going to start. Now, oh, I'm going to turn this over. I do score this three times. I'm not pushing super hard. But I'm just going to go back over my score lines. And I'm at six and a half. I mean, five and a half, five and three fourths, six, six and a quarter, six and a half six and three fourths and you'll see why it just makes it see i'm already getting that poop it's gonna make it already take form of what i'm wanting so i'm gonna score again at five five and five and a quarter five and a half five and three quarters six six and one quarter six and one half and six and three quarters this is just going to make it so much easier for you, I promise. See, it wants to bend for me already. And I'm just going to roll it like a roll top desk for a minute. Start getting things shaped. Because, you know, quarter inch gussets can be hard. But if you do it like this, not hard at all. Hi, Tina. Now it should push right down for you. I'm not really burnishing it very hard at this point because we're going to be flattening out and it's flat, flattening out our gussets here in a minute. In fact, I'm just going to use my fingers. Who saw what Sally posted today with that dollar store dollhouse? Okay, that is going to be so cute for Halloween. And I did, yes, it's dollar store, but I've had some of you contact me and say, you don't go to the dollar store or have one near. So I did order some in. 
and we'll see what Sally is going to show us that she's creating. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay. And I'm very happy that that's pretty much broken the fibers. And I'm going to turn this around. My five inches is on my right hand side. And so at five inches, when I put this in the quarter inch, you should just have a quarter inch on the side. And then I do like to check these. If it's not not matching. I'm going to trim it right off. So it is kind of, I know it's an extra step, but trust me, if you check everything now, you're not upset. So it looks like all mine are a little bit long. I'm just going to go ahead and trim them. And if you don't really care, then it's okay, too. Got a tad bit there to cut off. With my big cutter, I can cut them all at once. And so sometimes either a paper will slip or it just doesn't um, cut exactly right. That's called human error. <laughs> well, I'm bringing them in, so. Now in between your quarter inch, just go down the center. Add your adhesive. I'm going to use my scoreboard to butt it right up to that edge. Hi, Judy. Now, we're not going to worry about the other side. We're just going to keep moving along here. And right down the center of your next quarter inch. And then right up to the score line. Don't overlap it or go over it. Just to it. And don't use a lot of glue. You can use your dry adhesive or squirt tape. How, oh, I'm so glad you're at the beach, Sally. You know, I've got some shark friends there. Just let me know when you go in the water. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Now, I hope you took off your witch's hat while you're at the beach and just wearing your sun hat. I don't see Sally for a few more days. So she'll forget all about it and not kill me when she gets here. Oh, I, you know what? I have a surprise too, guys. I'm going to be giving away to one lucky person no, a prize. I'm going to be giving away a random prize. Oh, just wait. Um, now listen, you don't want to miss these and I'll see if Tanya, Tanya is just resting on her couch. I've checked with her to grab the link because you don't want to miss the special price The the knife you've seen me and you're going to see me use it here in a minute with the blades. Okay. This is for the same price that you're going to buy it in Joanne's or Michael's, but you're going to get five replacement blades and you don't have to 
change these blades, but probably I don't change them and I use them all the time, maybe every five months. So this is going to last me a year. Jump on the website and grab these at the special price that I got with Cricut. You don't want to miss this price. They're fabulous. But that one I'm going to give away in a random drawing. Thank you, Tanya, to one lucky person who's watching today when we're done. And and I'll send it out today, too. Oh, yeah, this knife is a game changer. And I, you know what? I heard, I did hear Sally say that there is, she's not going to just show you things that she would use or play with. Hi, Linda. I'm not either. And you know, you've seen me. Look at this one. This is my love. This is my trusted one that I've used now for a couple of years. And here's my new one. So see the difference from the inks and stuff? Um, I have actually three of them. I love them. They're in my kits. Um, that I take with me to places, but I would not, I would not have brought this in if it wasn't something. And I have the trigger finger and it hurts, but it, I've done a lot of exercises. It feels better, but that knife is so comfortable. It doesn't hurt. Hi, Peggy. It seems like forever since I've seen you. And tomorrow... We have the inspection on the store for the ceiling grid and the heating and air. And we can get the lighting up there this week. And we should be putting the floor in Saturday. So it looks like we're a little ahead of schedule. I'm excited about that. I can't wait to get moved in there. Hi, Diane. And we have one more. So you shouldn't have any score marks after this last one. But if you do, you have a choice. You can add another waterfall or you can just ignore it because it's not going to, it's not going to um, mess anything up. I promise. So if you've accidentally scored too many, or maybe you didn't score enough, just maybe score another quarter line. Oops, quarter, have a quarter inch, and you're good to go. That's what's so wonderful about this. It's it's like foolproof, unless you do it backwards, and then it doesn't. If you did it accidentally on this side. <laughs> But that's kind of easy to fix, too. That's what I like about this. All right. I'm going to turn it over. You'll see all my score lines and just burnish that and clean up any glue here at the bottom. To the right-hand side is my waterfall. I'm going to fold it that back piece around and we're going to burnish that over now if if we had made smaller waterfalls or less then this would have this would have reached out more and i'm also going to check my waterfalls i have one that it's a little off but it's really not going to show now if you can kind of imagine, hold down this back piece. And I've got my pink finger there. Now you're going to see how it moves. Isn't that cool? But before we start on anything else, I want you to turn it over to the back side. And I'm going to start with my first waterfall and bend that backwards. It's going to be like bending a fingernail back. It's the weirdest feeling. Then I'm going to hold this down as I fold over the next one. Here, it'll start. It'll start rolling. And bring out the big guys. 
Um, Tanya, you don't see any comments? And the next one. So as you start pulling, there we go. Kind of grab that. Oh, I don't see come. I see a welcome, Barb, but I don't see it. Oh, Barb, there you go. You're at the top. Hello. Welcome. This is your first time watching. Well, I'm glad you're here. And I do videos in the afternoon, and then I do them in the evening. So if you just watch my YouTube page, Country Craft Creations, it posts there or in our scrapbookers of country craft creation group. Don't force this. It'll lay down. Just kind of let it do its things. Hi, Debbie. Now, you can kind of see your, your back. It's getting more rolly. And it should roll pretty easy when you're holding that first page. Okay, what we're going to do next is... Turn this, I've got it upside down, and I have that seven by seven inch piece. I'm going to lay it down. And the main thing here is, if I take it all the way up, so you're going to be able to kind of place this where you want. Except, well, you'll have to grab your book. It can't be longer than your book. See how it will stick out a little further? If you want it to stick out even a little further to be your pull tab, you can do that, but I'm going to grab your box because we do only have this space. So you have to make sure and you don't want it to, of course, stick out that far. I usually go anywhere from a half inch just to an inch if you're wanting it for a pull tab. Or if you want to do it like on the original box, and I'll do that again, we'll add that closure. And it will also become your pull tab. So then I'd only want it to be about a quarter of an inch from the last page. I'm going to lay this here on my scoreboard. I have six and three eighths. So I'll go six and seven eighths or seven. If I want to go all the way up, I don't. So I am going to cut some of this off. I will cut a quarter of an inch off. I don't want it at the top of, of mine. It kind of makes, it, I take the chance <clears throat> and you will too. If you get it too close to the edge, you're going to impair the folding of your book, of your waterfall. So I'll just bring it a quarter. Mine's going to come down a quarter of an inch yep, from the top. Don't add glue to this one. If you do, you're going to have glue. It's going to be a mess. Add glue to this short piece. I'll stay a quarter of an inch away from the top.
Okay. And you're not going to see all of this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim here. I'm just going to trim. Got a little piece sticking out right here. I don't want it sticking out, so I'm just going to trim it. And you're not going to see this backside. Totally up to you if you want to mat that, but you do need to mat inside of here. You need to mat here because you've got a seam. It's going to get in the way. You need a smooth surface. You can either use your same color cardstock, or you can use one of the pattern papers. And I'm going to use one of the pattern papers. And like I said, you don't really see this much. I've already cut my waterfalls. I do want to take a peek real quick. Oh, never mind. I had cut this one to put here. <laughs> so I don't have to cut into one of our. Okay. As you can see, this is going to be short. It doesn't matter. It does not have to go to the top. You are not going to see this. So I know that this is seven inches wide. My scrap piece is five and three quarters. I'm going to go ahead and cut it down to six. I just need it to be six and seven eighths. And you're going to need whatever scraps from cutting your waterfalls. It doesn't matter. Once again, you'll see here in just a moment. I do want to ink my edges here, and I've already inked my others. I'm just using the black archival ink from Ranger. If you only have a four inch piece of paper, that's fine. Don't You don't have to cut something brand new. Just grab one of your scraps. You just need it to be six and seven eighths wide. Now, when I make these smaller, and I don't have to have a seam. I usually don't even cover it, except for this little tiny bit down here. But you want to cover that seam. You want the mechanism to be smooth. We'll just mat that like normal. Okay, now this is how we're going to make our mechanism work. I'm just going to turn it towards the front. And I'm going to open this. This is my last page. And I have all these 12, you want 12 inch scraps. And you're going to want two of them the same. I don't have two of these, so I'm going to go ahead and cut. This will be perfect. This is a three inch by 12 inch piece. And because of the size of our waterfall, I'm just, I'm going to cut it in half at one and a half. So you'll want two pieces, one and a half by 12. And just use your scraps. So our first piece on this back page, I don't measure. There's really no need to, but for you guys, I will. So one half inch. My half inch mark on my score of how board one half inch from the top is where I'm going to glue this. Oh, Connie, they're on their way, they'll be here Friday. They'll be here Friday. These glue tips in the correct size will be here Friday. So, I don't even, I'm not putting it on here because I don't want glue all over this thing in the wrong places. I'm just going to add some adhesive here again, just keep about a half inch from the top. No special measurements. I promise. Oh, 
Marilyn, this is because not only is this a fun working mechanism, but it um, it may, it holds a lot of pictures. Now, I did a tutorial, my spring one. Let me show you. You can make this with 12 waterfalls. Um, if you've seen this tutorial, I did a, I did the waterfall standalone, and it's on my website. It's on my YouTube. Just look for this standalone. There's 12 of them. So watch this. Oh, I took, I put that on there because it was so big. So you've got 12 of them. And I show you how to make the 12. Isn't that fun? So for weddings, these are great. It, it doesn't need this, but I had put it there. I liked it. So just look for the uh, pole waterfall for this tutorial. Um, I'm right here, Sally. You guys, Sally has escaped from the special hospital and she's at the beach, so ignore her. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. See how that's sitting there? Just sitting there. Nothing hard or special about this. Turn it over. Now I want you to just fold it, but keep something there, whether it's your finger. There. You don't want it tight. Sally, it's okay. I won't call the authorities. Fold that in half. Again, do not make that tight. Doesn't matter what side. I'm just going to add about a half inch of glue there. I'm going to glue this down. And you're going to cut it so it's about two inches. You want it about a two inch overlap. Now for this, I'll kind of mark. We're going to add the adhesive. Fold that over. And we're going to hold it for a minute. We, oops, we do not want or put something back there. We don't want glue to get on our on the back of our, we don't want glue there. You might hear my Beagle Wilbur snoring, sorry. We wanna make sure these are down before we start playing with it. That basically is all there is to making this waterfall. That's it. So I'm going to turn it this way. So I can get my finger here. Well, I can hold it this way. Maybe. Sometimes we have to help it the first couple of times. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and glue this in the book. So we can make it work better. You can see how it slides. And I'm not, I don't want to pull on it right now, but you see how it's going to slide up there? That's why this part has to be smooth. Super easy to mat in the book or out. Let's go ahead. I will mat the front, but I will mat the backs later. Um, because I've already cut out my paper and I cut them four and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. But when you do this inside part, because you've lost a quarter of an inch. Can you guys hear Wilbur snoring? I don't know if you, I can't believe you if you didn't hear, don't hear that. So I will use white and it'll be five and five eighths by six and seven eighths because you lose a quarter of an inch of white. But I'm going to go ahead and mat my covers. I can't believe you guys can't hear him.
Not Beagle. He needs he needs a CPAP. Now, for those of you coming to visit the store, you'll get to see Wilbur in there. that one. Oh, but that's really pretty. I hate that when I start putting them on. I see the backs and I love them and the fronts. With this camera, I can't get closer, closer, Sharla. Um, on my personal page, I do have a video of him snoring. He snores all the time. My husband will smack me at night. Not hard. Tell me to stop snoring. I tell him it's not me. It's Wilbur. Lay advertisement. Oh, and I'm I'm so tempted to use my metallic flakes and go back. I probably will. We'll do that at the very end for decorating. Yes, you never clean this thing. I never clean this thing. So I'm using my vintage Santa, the other side, the vintage Santa, because this is our little bit more modern Santa. Yeah, these will be here Friday. And our place, no, yeah, our place photo stamp is back in stock. I've got to let some people know that have been waiting. And the next piece, you guys, I know, but you get two of them. I cut one of the tags. I'll use the other tags for inside of my, um, the album that we make because... This black is going to be an absolute gorgeous background for a picture of a Christmas tree. You know, put the Christmas tree there. Shining at night with nobody around it. The presents untouched. And this is pot, the back of one of my tags, but get two sets of tags in your package. And then you get three sheets of each design, so you've got plenty. Oh, I might need to cut one more. I do. Do you need to cut eight? Oh, you do on this one because of that extra. We got to cut one more. Oh, that's my cover. We're not going to cut the cover. We'll cut the bird.
to go next to the gold. Huh, my browser lost my mic there for a minute, it said. I hope you guys can hear me. So remember, cut eight fronts, and then I'll only need to cut seven of the backs. Okay, so there's my waterfall, and it really comes together fast. It's really easy to, to map the back sides while it's down, and if you don't want to map the backs, you can just, you can even stamp the back, but I will be matting that in white. Okay, so when we open our, our box... Down it will go. Now, if you're going to put, let's do this now. If you, if you wanted to put this on, we needed to put a magnet underneath there. So I, I messed that up for you guys. Because I had it in my head. I'm not going to. But this is going to go underneath. So I don't think a lot of you are at that matting stage anyway. So put your magnet underneath here first, under your pattern paper. Magnet on the back here. And I'll tell you the length here in a minute. Do you see I'm just I am just folding that under the back? I will burnish it that way. And we will glue it to the back. Just add your adhesive. And this little guy is actually. My mat's on upside down. It's actually nine inches by three, I believe. No, nine by, by two and a quarter. I literally just grabbed it out of my scrap pile. I will add the glue. But I go ahead and mat your front. Magnet on the back to match here. And then put that down. Like I said, it's not necessary. It was just that one. I actually cut this piece too short and you couldn't get it. This one, I made it so it was long enough. I now have a pull tab, and we're going to add one. So I'm going to leave this off. You can also just put a ribbon on the back. In fact, I have the ribbon that's going to be in your kit, the black and the silver. So you can fold that over. That's kind of long. I would add it back here. Oh, yes, Connie is right. I'm glad my teacher's here. <laughs> she, <laughs> Thank you, Connie. Yes, you can put the magnet back here. Just reverse them. Absolutely. Or on, under the first one. Yes, you can with the large ones. Um, a ribbon would look really nice as your pull tab here. It does really look cute. So you can definitely add that right there. And you would pull it. So use a strong adhesive on the back. Now we're going to attach this down, but you can, you'll see it does, it really does stay closed, especially once you start using it more, it will start staying closed. The only place we're going to glue is right here. Do not add glue anywhere else, but on your, your um, strap thing here. Well, you keep me in line, Connie. <laughs> So I got my hand back there. Center it. Then if you have something flat, just like a plastic um, putty knife, 
will work great to get in there. Exactly. We help each other. Especially with the wet adhesive. We don't want to we don't want to start pulling on it yet. And so you might want a pull tab. And you did see the pull tab that I show on this one. Um, oh, I, I keep forgetting I put that there. The pull tab here, I just used a punch. Punched out one of the pictures. And I did it for front and back to make it strong. And that became my pull tab. You can be real creative if you want to add that extra pull tab on there. Or you don't have to be. You can just you can leave it like this. Because now, see, I have plenty of room to grab a hold of this. And that's how your mechanism works. Wasn't that easy? You're going to be, I make these, you can make these for standalone. You can make them any, any size you want. When I say size, it means as many of the waterfalls. You just kind of have to add your piece to the back. So if you want 12, then you can do like I did on the other tutorial. But I've done these just as cards. And what you do is then you make your card base. So I'd make it smaller so it's more my card width. And then you put it on a card front. You got to have a beefed up card. So make sure you you use the artisan card stock or 100 pounds. And then they can just open it. Because I like to make sometimes bigger cards for the relatives. And then when you close your box, see, it'll fit in there nicely. My, my little uh, shelf here is bowing somewhat. But as I... I get um, this pushed up there. And actually, it really doesn't touch, but it will once I get photos. And that's why I used the lightweight chipboard with you guys, so that you would have some flexibility. Hi, Donna's inside of your box. So there's our waterfall. And you can go through and decorate it. And you can put a pull tab if you like. But where I did leave enough, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and close this for now. And we are going to make the cover for the book. So we've still got our feet to put on. Yeah, and you'll get uh, the Tim Holtz. I just had these from a long time ago. My graphic 45. No, you'll get the graphic 45. Sorry. And that's what will go on the feet. So it'll look really nice sitting out for the holidays. All right, let's start on. We're going to do the album cover. And then Thursday, we're going to do the insides. And that will give you guys time to catch up. Now, I did already cover one piece of my chipboard. You want to cut two pieces of your chipboard. Oops, seven and three quarters seven now if you cut it any bigger it's not gonna fit in your box so seven and three quarters by seven and it has a one inch spine and that's all you can have is a one inch spine or it won't fit in your box and you're gonna be very unhappy okay and you won't have any room to fill it because you can't go bigger than one inch with this and so I did already cover one piece because you guys, I think you're pros now at covering your chipboard. And I use my score tape sheets. So you want two pieces of your cardstock that is um, seven, no, that's nine by nine and three quarters. So we need an inch all the way around. So get my spacers. And use your favorite adhesive on the back. We 
we're going to wrap it just like we did with our boxes, but this is heavyweight chipboard. So in your, if you order the kit, this is going to be pre-cut for you. And it'll be the heavier chipboard, the album size, al album weight. And just like that. It's down, and we have more spacers being made. Um, if they are out on the website, they're so hard to keep in stock. I'm going to double the order with, with the gentleman that makes these. going to burnish up the edges. Put that down. Okay, now I'm going to cut the corners. I've been practicing <laughs> Connie, so Connie um, showed us or told me a different way just to fold, fold it and it gets done faster. Or if you're new to this method, here, I'm going to show you, I use, I would cut the corners. This way is faster. And with anything new, it took me just a few times practicing and now I'm comfortable. So that's how I'll be cutting my corners. But now we still have to go ahead and just fold that one over and just miter it. I'll have a few extra to do because I cut those two the norm, the old way. And just clean it up if you need to, but keep it, remember, keep it straight. Don't go in too deep. Add your favorite adhesive and let's go ahead and wrap it. I have it. I've always wanted to get those little squares out perfect. Perfect, but this it is a little bit of a time saver. So I like it. Ooh, excuse me, I'm not bored. It's just getting harder and harder to sleep with two beagles in the bed, but I'm not taking them out. But they both have to get up close to me now. I'm. They're sound asleep in their beds now while I'm yawning. That's how it works. Okay. And just like that, our covers front and back are covered. Of course, I did one in advance. <laughs> so that will be my front and back. Now, um, this is seven inches high and seven and three quarter inches long. You'll know because your spine won't fit. It has to be I may have cut my spine wrong. I think my spine was only supposed to be seven. Yes, it was. I don't know why I cut it seven and three quarters. Oh, it is seven and three quarters. Oh, no, it's not. Sorry, guys. Spine piece. So, Tanya, make sure I change that. Spine piece is only seven inches. I don't know what I was thinking. Yep, seven inches. So if you wrote down those measurements, but like I said in your kit, it, it will be written and right. This is only seven inches. 
Okay, I'm going to cut that down. Oh, thank you, Connie. That's so nice. Perfect. Okay. The piece of cardstock to wrap your chipboard, though, it's going to be three inches wider. I want one and a half on each side, but I only want one inch at the top. So this is going to be four inches. Oh, and I think, no. Yeah, I need to cut some of the length off because I don't need nine and three quarters. I only need nine inches. So I'll take three quarters of an inch off. That will give me an inch at the top and an inch at the bottom. But we want one and a half inches on the side. So I'll use my one and a half inch spacer and that will sit there. Now I'm going to bend it backwards. And I'll bend it backwards again. This is a hinge. We don't want it to be tight. So we want, we want your sides to move freely. So go ahead and, and uh, burnish that score back and forth so that you can achieve that. Um, right now, Diane, these aren't in stock, and so they'll be here Friday. We can let you know. So now we have a rectangle. And if you're new to this, I'll cut the first two out all the way, and then we'll do the others the other way. So cut right up to that chipboard. And here I'll just fold it and angle it. Hold that in and yep I do angle these end pieces they're little so you don't need to take off a lot now we have to do the sides separate so see, that saves us from having to do the extra cutting. But I got to fix him. Because you don't want anything, you want to keep this straight. You don't want to have anything sticking over the top. Yeah, other than that, uh, Diane, when they come in, I can get a hold of you. If they were online, you'd just order them and then I'd refund the shipping, but they're not on the website to order. Okay, we're going to fold these down. So I will message you before we send your kid out and save you one. Do 
then if you need to trim anything, you can because, again, you don't want anything above the chipboard. It should be a straight line. Blue. Now I'm going to turn this over. Just grab your chipboard so that there's no tension on it, which is going to gently push in against the chipboard. And now we can grab the covers. And I start over on this side. And we're, see, when I did that with my bone folder, it creates kind of a ledge. <laughs> How can I go live when I'm late home from work? Next time, David, you and I will coordinate on the times. <laughs> you were supposed to be off early today for this see how nice that will sit up don't don't put it over keep it about a 16th of an inch away from there and then you'll be you'll be great keep the adhesive 16th of an inch from there now the designers a lot of them almost I'm not sure, but most of them use this method because wrapping it is so easy. Um, they have different methods for hooking up with the spine piece. And so make sure you watch them. I know Bonnie does it a little different because even I learn things from watching each one of them. And you might find something different that you like, how they're connecting it. But I turn it over now and really burnish that. And I burnish along this this edge of my chipboard I'm going to fold it back and it will depend on your cardstock if you're using artisan you'll be fine but see how nice that's going to look okay let's do this side same thing Again, remember to keep it about a sixteenth of an inch from there, from the edge of this chipboard. You don't want it to overlap. Right now, see your, your album's a little wobbly. Didn't that look nice, though? Um, I need to cover it inside here. Again, I'm just going to go for the scraps. Let's see what we got here. And maybe I won't go for the scraps because, oh, yes, I will. I have one. Um, main thing is you want your cardstock to be wider than these two in hinges. So it needs to be three. So it needs to be about four inches because you want it to hit to the inside. That way you don't have as much bulk and it needs to be six and seven eighths. So it looks like I've got a six and a half inch piece. And that's just fine. I'm going to cut it six and seven eighths 
because our album's seven inches high. And, well, I'm going to go a little bit longer than six and seven eighths. Keep the hair over. And I like to use spore tape. I don't like to get anything wet in the grooves where your hinges bend because it gets it's wet. If you're using a wet adhesive, it's going to get in there and it's going to um, it'll weaken the paper until it dries, and you could accidentally crack it, stick stick your bone folder through. So I don't like to. There's, I lost my paper. Um, so I'll go that way. So I'll have to cut a strip. And if you are using score tape on the roll, just go this way. Again, don't go up and down. You might get it in the hinges and it may not like, you know, completely correct. Okay. Cut that off and we'll put this along the bottom. it again. And I'm not worried. Let me show you. I'm not worried about this or that little spots there because we're going to cover it with paper. It's not going to lift. It'll be just fine. Now, be careful with this because if it flips over, it's stuck to whatever it's going down on. I promise you, I've done it before on here. Oh, yeah, it's a booger to get out. Oh, but I do want to, that's what I wanted to check, make sure we're going the correct way. Oh, it will be open, David. We're opening in September. Yay. Well, it doesn't matter. You, you need to come visit. If nothing else, I have a lot of customers who come from overseas. And then they have me ship their order to wherever they're, the, wherever they're staying and take it home with them. Okay, let's put that on there. And now, see, you can see how much stronger your album is. Even if, you know, for not, it's not just for this project. This would be a fun gift. So you could get a bunch of these covers made. Set them aside and have a cute just a really nice gift uh, for that special co-worker that you maybe want to give a little more to but you don't want to make a whole album because you don't like them that much right <laughs> Let's make sure we're straight we're straight Our edges are down. Okay. There we go. That's the album cover that will go inside of our box. We got to finish that two together. And it'll fit super nice right down inside of our first or that last little divider. And again, we used lightweight chipboard. 
we use the lightweight chipboard so we do have some give and if you want it down here um, it's really not going to fit down there and it will fit it'll fit either that way it fits that way however you want to put this in your box so that is where i'm going to leave you and we're going to come back and do the inside on thursday let's see the calendar thursday may be an evening class more than likely and we'll come back and we'll build the inside of our album so you'll, i'll have that cutting guide posted for you tomorrow it's always nice when a tutorial goes with little <laughs> little issues and there you go thanks everybody for joining me and i'll see you on thursday we will be done with our box the first week of september so we'll probably finish this baby up you know we're gonna have to get this baby finished <laughs> we may be working on saturday or sunday um probably sunday afternoon i'll come on also we'll do thursday and sunday so we'll be pretty much um out the door with our box thanks for watching and i'll see you at the next tutorial next tutorial bye, -bye.